Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Firstly, let me introduce myself My name is Yasmin and here I would like to talk about finger brain detection in chemistry So, why did I choose this topic? Because fingerprint identification is very helpful forensically to find the perpetrators of criminal cases that is pure. This helping the police to process cases. It is known at this time the crime by cells or crap of significant can increase, especially theft, rape, and so forth. So that investigator, especially the police, are required to be able to reveal every crime that occurred. Based on the fingerprint trace, phone can be divided into several types. First, plastic fingerprint. These fingerprints are mechanical. For example, if the hand of the offender holds a salvage material, the mechanical pressure of the fingers can leave fingerprint mark on the object. So this type of fingerprint can be seen visually. Second, pattern fingerprint. This fingerprint imprints on a surface because of the presence of coloring agents. For example, ink, blood, soil, oil, and others. Patent fingerprint traces can be seen visually. And in third, latent fingerprint. This type of fingerprint imprints on a surface that is formed or held because our body secret secretions can be part or sweat produced from sweat glands. The secretion substance is an electrolyte solution or solvent with fat and urea and other organic compounds. This fingerprint traces cannot always be seen visually to make it visible that chemicals are needed by sprinkling certain powders. Here are some methods that can be used to find someone's fingerprint. First, dust fingerprint. This method is the simplest way to identify someone's fingerprint by sprinkling powder on fingerprints. This method is used if the suspect fingerprints can be seen by the neck eye or commonly called visual fingerprint. This kind of fingerprint can be found in the suspect's hands were covered in blood or ink. Fingerprints that stick to the surface of objects are sprinkled with powder. For example, powder from a face spray used on fresh surface. The powder surface is then carefully brushed with a small brush. The powder that is outside the fingerprint is immediately removed. So, the fingerprint is visible. The tap is attached to the fingerprint that has been sprayed with the powder that stick it on white paper. The fingerprint pattern attached to the masking tap and white paper was observed in the investigation to identify the owner of the fingerprint as a suspect. Second, cyanocrylic. The fingerprint that cannot be seen directly with the neck eye are called latent fingerprints. To be seen, experts usually use chemicals such as cyanocrylic glue, iodine, silver chloride, and ninhydrin. Cyanocrylic glue is used to identify fingerprints by applying it to the surface of an aluminum object that is stored in a closed container, such as a jar. The jar has also inserted the surface of objects containing fingerprints that have been smeared with oil. The jar is then tightly closed. 
cyanocrylate will evaporate so that the vapor will stick to the surface of oily objects containing suspect tissue frames. The more cyanocrylate attached to the oily surface, the more visible tissue frames can be easily identified. Third, iodine. Iodine is known as an oxidizing agent. Iodine, when heated, will sublimate, which changes its form solely to gas. Then, this iodine gas will react with sweat or oil on the fingerprint. This chemical reaction produces a yellowish brown color. The resulting color doesn't last long, so it must to be portrayed immediately to be documented. Fourth, silver nitrate. Every crime certainly leaves a trace. The perpetrators who have committed crimes, he will sweat because he feels afraid of being caught. Sweat from the offender contains salt or sodium chloride, which is released toward the pores of skin. If the offender forms objects, we can investigate using silver nitrate. If silver nitrate is measured with sodium chloride, it will produce salt, sodium nitrate, and silver chloride as indicated. The reactions that occur as shown in the slide below. Okay, the silver nitrate solution is sprayed into the surface of objects suspect to be tortured by the offender. After 5 minutes, the surface of the object will dry and the silver will be seen. Then, bright or ultraviolet light that is highlighted on the surface of the object will make fingerprints containing silver nitrate visible. The resulting color doesn't last long so it must be photographed immediately to be documented. Fifth, ninhydrin. Ninhydrin is a chemical that reacts with oil and sweat can produce a purple color. Every human finger contains oil and sweat. The culprit must touch an object when the object that is allegedly touched by the perpetrator is sprayed with a solution of ninhydrin. After leaving it for 10 until 20 minutes, it will look purple. This process can be accelerated by utilizing lamp heat. Seek fluorescence. This substance has another name for sporous, aiming that fingerprints can glow in the dark. Fluorescent powder is sprinkled on fingerprints that stick to the surface of the object. Excess powder is cleaned with a brush. Then it is illuminated with UV light 365 mm. And the last are tin and mercury powder. These substances are substances that can easily stick to leaden fingerprints. Four pictures can be seen on this slide. Okay, that's all about my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And as I say, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.